demonstrated the lo left typical sonographic presentation of de Corvain's thyroiditis is demonstrated the large hypochogenic field has blurred borders outside and the small intralesional hypochogenic areas has ill-defined borders too on the other hand the irregular borders of the hypochogenic area in Hashimoto's thyroiditis is not blurred but sharp and puzzle-like. Moreover, the latter presents fibrosis, as well. There are practically identical lesions in both diseases. Regular hypochogenic lesions presenting comatale artifact can be observed. However, the thyroiditis displays several smaller, less hypochogenic areas, too. Although the ultrasound pattern is not fully decisive in the case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the likelihood of autoimmune disease is greater than 80% solely on the ultrasound images. Both cases raise the possibility of lymphocytic thyroiditis but with different degrees of likelihood. Thyroiditis presents not only tiny but bit larger hypochogenic areas, which increases the likelihood of autoimmune disease. The hypochogenic lesions are better demarcated and are more regular geometrical in the hyperplastic nodule than in thyroiditis. There are three differences between these cases. First, Hashimoto's thyroiditis presents fibrosis even within the hypochogenic areas. Second, the extralesional borders of hypochogenic fields of de Corvain's thyroiditis are more blurred and even the intralesional borders are ill-defined which makes the sonographic pattern cloudy. The sonographic presentations are almost identical, both lesions could be nodule in a pathological sense or could not be. The two cases differs in the presentation of the borders, the right lesion presents in the ventral surface an ill-defined part of border while the borders of the left lesion are all along sharp. However, this difference is not enough to an unequivocal sonographic differential diagnostic. There is only one relevant difference between the sonographic appearance of these cases. The papillary carcinoma contains two or three focuses of microcalcification. Nevertheless, these cases have a striking similarity. Both cases present multiple hypochogenic areas. The borders of these lesions are blurred in de Corvain's thyroiditis while sharp in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. There is no significant difference between these cases, moreover the benign lesion presents microcalcification therefore it is more suspicious. Note the taller than wide sign in the irregular shape of the nodules. Paradoxically, the benign lesion presents microcalcification. On the other hand it is worth to compare the borders of the nodules, the papillary carcinoma displays blurred while the thyroiditis displays sharp, puzzle-like borders. The sonographic presentation and the likelihood of malignancy is similar in these nodules, both present cluster of microcalcifications. In the event of thyroiditis, there are multiple small, more hypochogenic lesions in the lower half of the thyroid. Both cases present fibrosis which is extensive in the case of thyroiditis. The sonographic appearance of thyroiditis mimics that of a large hypochogenic nodule. The small irregularities in the surface of the hypochogenic part in the presence of small hypochogenic areas within the extralesional part are those features which stand against being the large lesion and nodule in a pathological sense. Nevertheless, being the lesion a nodule in a pathological sense seems more likely than the opposite opportunity. The limitations of ultrasonography are demonstrated with these cases. Although we can find small differences, the sonographic presentations are very similar, multiple discrete lesions are presented in an echonormal background. On the other hand, the Hashimoto's case presents fibrosis and hypochogenic areas outside the discrete lesions. One of the typical presentations of Hashimoto's thyroiditis is demonstrated in this patient. Both lobes contain moderately hypochogenic and hypochogenic discrete areas presenting fibrotic changes. The large hypochogenic area in the right lobe does not fit to a nodule in a pathological sense, the shape of the lesion is not geometrical, the borders are irregular. The four images come from the same patient.
This is an unusual presentation of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Only one relatively large hypokagenic discrete lesion is found in both lobes. The presence of fibrosis, the puzzle-like borders and the presence of smaller hypokagenic areas are the signs which have raised doubt about the nature of the lesions and raised the possibility that these lesions are not nodules of pathological sense but an unusual presentation of lymphocytic thyroiditis. The right lobe presents one of the typical sonographic presentations of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The lobe contains multiple small hypokagenic areas not of regular geometrical shape. The left lobe contains a large nodule displaying halo sign. In contrast with the right lobe, the left thyroid is not econormal but minimally hypokagenic. The nodule in the right thyroid presents halo sign all along the borders which makes very likely that the lesion is a follicular tumor. The basic echo structure of the thyroid is minimally hypokagenic and there are small hypokagenic areas in both lobes. Multiple hypokagenic areas are found in both cases. The lesions in Decorvain's thyroiditis display blurred borders while those in Hashimoto's thyroiditis do sharp borders. This table demonstrates the main difference between the two forms of thyroiditis, the hypokagenic fields in Decorvain's thyroiditis present ill-defined borders while those in Hashimoto's thyroiditis do sharp borders. There is one relatively great hypokagenic lesion in both cases. The only difference is that in the right case there are several smaller similarly hypokagenic areas, too. The latter raises the possibility of Hashimoto's thyroiditis but by no way excludes the possibility that the larger lesion would be a nodule in a pathological sense. Two cases are demonstrated in which Hashimoto's thyroiditis coexisted with papillary carcinoma. At first sight, the left case may be a typical presentation of Hashimoto's thyroiditis with a small intact part. Nevertheless, the larger hypokagenic lesion demonstrated in the upper, horizontal scan, and right to the echonormal area in the lower longitudinal scan presents non-specific hyperkagenic granules. Compare in the lower image the smaller hypokagenic area left to the echonormal in the larger, right to the echonormal area. The latter proved to be a papillary carcinoma. The right case demonstrates a similar situation. The whole thyroid is minimally, moderately hypokagenic corresponding to the underlying autoimmune thyroiditis. There are two more hypokagenic areas in the upper, horizontal scan. In contrast with the ventromedial lesion the central one contains three hyperkagenic granules. The latter lesion is presented in the lower, longitudinal scan. Again, Two cases of coexisting papillary carcinoma and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. First, the left case. There is a relatively large, hypokagenic lesion with lobulated margins in the central part of the left lobe. Although the irregular shape and the borders can be held as suspicious for carcinoma, similar hypokagenic areas are no infrequently found in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Note the smaller hypokagenic areas in other parts of the lobe. The right case presents a more diffusely hypokagenic lobe which contains a lesion with a bit different echo structure. It is more hypokagenic and contains hyperkagenic granules. These are partly microcalcifications. The lower, longitudinal scan proves that coarse calcification has to be present, as well, because of the two acoustic shadows. The sonographic images of a hypothyroid patient with an atrophic thyroid are presented. The ventral hypokagenic area pointed with a red arrow is a muscle fiber ventral to the thyroid. The thyroid is echonormal and contains moderately hypokagenic areas. The left thyroid demonstrated a relatively unusual presentation of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. A central hypokagenic, nodule-like lesion is surrounded with an echonormal rim. The hypokagenic part presents fibrosis and has puzzle-like borders. Naturally, we cannot exclude the possibility of a nodule, even a carcinoma solely on ultrasound appearance, therefore aspiration cytology is mandatory. Both lobes are composed of a central hypokagenic part surrounded with an echonormal rim. 
The latter may be intact areas of the thyroid, but it seems more likely that the echinormal field is connective tissue outside the thyroid. Note the shape of the hypochogenic part which is not regular, geometrical. This is a characteristic pattern of Hashimoto's thyroiditis and is not infrequently interpreted as a large hypochogenic nodule surrounded with echinormal part of the thyroid.